Hey everybody, I am Carolyn Byers from Madison Audubon. I am the Education Director and I am coming to you live from my living room again. Um, we are still staying safer and funner at home because COVID's still an issue, everybody. <laughs> so if you go outside, bring a mask with you, wear it when you're next to people, and otherwise try to give everybody a large bubble. We want a social distance while we're having fun outside. Okay and inside social distance. Um, today's lesson is all about squirrels. And I picked squirrels today because we are in the middle of mammal week in our virtual summer camp. So if you're looking for something fun to do this summer, um, check out our webpage, madisonaudubon.org. And at the top in the education menu, there's a little drop down for our virtual summer camp called Forces of Nature. And that is free, it's open to anyone. You don't have to register, you can join whenever you want. Um, so check out those lessons, they're great for kids. I think I'd enjoy them too, so fun for adults as well if you're curious. Um, and I, this is Mammal Week right now, so I chose a lesson on squirrels today. Um, I am gonna go and try to find this video on my computer, got it. So if you have any questions or comments would like to share, add a comment uh, down below and I will check it out and answer your questions live. And if you're watching this later, not live, I can answer your questions then too. So don't hesitate to comment. Um, all right. So we are going to be doing eight minute notes later today. Um, for kids or adults, um, but mostly kids. Uh, so if you want to do eight minute notes, grab yourself a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper or your nature journal. I see Johnny saying hi. Hi, Johnny, it's good to see you. Um, so have your, have your paper and pen ready if you wanna do eight minute notes with us, okay? All right, I think that's all I wanna say before we get started. We are talking about squirrels and there are so many squirrels in Wisconsin, in Madison especially, everywhere. Um, so we have, are you ready? We have gray squirrels, I almost said furls, <laughs> gray squirrels. We have red squirrels, fox squirrels, flying squirrels, northern and southern, 13 line ground squirrels, that's six, um, the least chipmunk, the eastern chipmunk, and are you ready for it? A woodchuck is considered in the squirrel family. So that's nine species of squirrels that live in our area. And I'm gonna go find some pictures for you, okay? Um, I have a few field guides with me today. You know how I love a good field guide. This one is Mammals of North America. I think it has some great pictures in it. Um, I also have the field guide to urban wildlife. It's kind of fun, not so much about identifying, but it has a lot of cool stories about the animals. Um, stories in the like ecological story sense. Um, Oh, and Sophia and Piper say hi. Hi, guys. Um, and I have this one here, which is Mammal Tracks and Signs by Elbrick. And I love this one. This one's cool. We'll get to it later. All right, so you want to see pictures of squirrels? I got them. We have the eastern gray squirrel up here. And that shows a gray and a black squirrel. They can also be white. So these are the same species of squirrel. And they're, they're just different colors. And there's um, in our... In our summer camp, there's a whole activity we suggest about becoming a squirrel citizen scientist. And Project Squirrel is a way for people to help scientists track whether they see black or gray squirrels in their neighborhood. So maybe I'll add a link in the comments for that and you can check it out. It's kind of cool. Um, let's see, we, Easter, we also have the Eastern Fox Squirrel and they have a few different color morphs too, but they're usually a reddish color and they're very big. They're much bigger than gray squirrels. Um, gray squirrels usually hang out in neighborhoods and cities really easily. Um, fox squirrels, they're a little bit more, uh, they're less likely to live near humans. So fox squirrels, you might have to head out into a wooded area or a larger park to see them. Um, let's see, Mexican squirrels, they don't live here. Uh, that'd be cool if they did, but they don't. Um, let me see what other squirrels we have. We have the red squirrel here. This one spends more time up in the north woods of Wisconsin. They really like um, pine forests and they like to be a little further away from humans too. And we have the northern and southern flying squirrel. These ones are more common in the north woods for sure, but I have seen them in my neighborhood in Middleton. Um, not regularly, but I have seen them. And I know someone who lives in Madison who regularly gets them at their bird feeders. So 
keep your eyes out because I didn't know that these lived so close to where I live. And so it didn't occur to me to look, but now that I know, I look for them. And I mean, you can't see it if you don't look for it, right? So everybody keep your eyes peeled for, for flying squirrels. And I also wanna say, flying squirrels don't really fly. They have really neat um, flaps of skin connecting their arms on each side. And when they open those flaps like this, it helps them glide. So flying squirrels run up, the, run up a tree, they climb up a tree, and then they glide from one tree to the next. So they can't fly like a bird or like a bat, but they sure can move really fast, and it's pretty neat. I don't know if I would want to fly like a bird, but I think I'd be pretty good at gliding, you know, if I could. <laughs> Um, what else do we have here? You know, we didn't get to our chipmunks or our 13 line ground squirrels. I'm going to try to find those. There are a whole lot of ground squirrels in the world. And this is the 13 line ground squirrel. I don't often see them in my neighborhoods. They might live in some people's neighborhoods, especially if you live closer to a prairie or if you have very sandy soil. So this animal got its name because it has so many different stripes. I have not actually counted, but I bet there are 13. Um, and this one is, um, well, it is a ground squirrel, right? Meaning it spends most of its time on the ground. It doesn't climb trees too much, um, especially since they live in a prairie. There aren't too many trees. Um, but a chipmunk is also considered a, uh, a ground squirrel. Um, and they don't spend as much time, they spend more time on the ground. They don't spend much time up in trees. So this is an eastern chipmunk. And I said we also have the least chipmunk. Where is that one? Hmm, here's the least chipmunk. It's a little smaller. The stripes on the face are a little bit different. This is another one where I, I thought all chipmunks were the same species. I didn't realize that there was a least chipmunk here until I took a mammalogy class when I was in school. Um, so that was, I think things like that are really interesting where, um, you know, like when I first started learning about ducks, I didn't realize there were something like 30 species in North America. I just thought they were ducks. Um, so take a look at the face next time you see a chipmunk and try to find out if it's an Eastern or a, um, oh, sorry, an Eastern or a least chipmunk. Okay. So I think I went through all of the our, our squirrels. Oh, the woodchuck. Let's go find a woodchuck. I was, uh, back when I took a mammalogy class, I was also surprised to find out that woodchucks were in the squirrel family because they are just so large. Um, hey, woodchuck, where'd you go? Also, I want to show you this one. The Abert squirrel which lives out west. Check out the ears on this guy. <laughs> or gal. They are very tufty. That's a, that's a fancy squirrel. I think those are cool. Um, all right, so we were looking for a woodchuck, weren't we? Here is our woodchuck. Some people call them groundhogs. Um, and they hang out, I see them a lot on the side of the road when I'm road tripping on the side of highways. And I mean live ones. <laughs> I do see dead ones too. Um, but I sometimes play woodchuck with my friends. And when we're driving in a car together, um, we will get one point if you just see a woodchuck and two points if the woodchuck is standing up on its hind legs like this. I don't know how dead woodchucks factor into the woodchuck game. You'll have to make up that rule yourself and let me know. Type it in the comments. But woodchuck is a fun game to play, especially out east where there are more woodchucks. Um, but woodchucks are pretty cool, and you can see them at parks, um, big grassy areas usually. And once I watched one walk around a field and eat all of the dandelion flowers off of it, which was just really cute. And I would like to point out this hoary marmot. It lives out west and in Alaska. Look at the chompers on that one. <laughs> they do all make a lot of really cool vocalizations. And um, maybe we'll do that later today. Or maybe that's something that you guys can go hunt for on the internet. Uh, look up marmot vocalizations. Okay. Um, so those are all of the squirrels that we have in Wisconsin. And today I'm going to focus mostly on our eastern gray squirrel. Because they are 
the most common and the most easy to see and they're really fun because they have a lot of cool behaviors that they can uh, that you can watch um, all right so if anyone has questions remember type them in or if anyone has really cool squirrel sightings they want to share let me know uh, we have some squirrels that hang out on my bird feeders and it's really neat watching them uh, fight over who gets to be on the bird feeder um, and it's also neat watching them when a hawk flies over and seeing what they do and sometimes they scurry for cover really fast and other times they just sit really still under our bird feeder because it has a little roof on it um, so it's like they they know where the of course they know where they're safe they're they're prey animals right <laughs> all right so gray squirrels they are mostly vegetarians, so they eat a lot of acorns. That's their favorite food. They also eat buds and oak flowers, and honestly, sometimes they prey on um, birds, nestling birds, uh, when they're still babies in the nest. Um, but mostly, mostly, they eat a lot of acorns. Um, and they are what is called a scatter hoarder. And I think that's a really fun term. So when you're hoarding something, it means you try to get as much of it as you can. Um, people were talking about hoarders and toilet paper earlier this year, remember? Um, so we, well, hoarding toilet paper, not good. Hoarding acorns, if you're a squirrel, good. <laughs> There's lots of acorns out there. All right, so they're scatter hoarders. So they're trying to get as many acorns as they possibly can, um, but they're not putting them all in the same place. They're scattering them around. And actually, they usually hide one acorn in each place. And they try to remember uh, where it is, of course, because they want to go back and eat it. And they usually use um, both their, uh, their memory to get back there, but they also they can smell it once they get close enough. Um, so they're scatter hoarders, and there have been a lot of studies done by scientists on squirrels and what they eat and how they eat and where they hide it and how they get back to it. And one of those studies found that 74% of acorns were not recovered, meaning they didn't find most of the acorns that they hid, which is a whole ton of work to go about hiding all of these acorns and then not be able to find them. Just think how easy squirrel life would be if they could recover all of their acorns. Um, but the cool thing about that is that acorns really rely on animals, not acorns, oak trees, really rely on animals to disperse their acorns because acorns, they're kind of big, they're kind of heavy, they fall right to the ground from the tree, the wind can't blow them at all, um, so they need animals to move them around. So it is actually a pretty cool thing that squirrels are hiding these acorns around, effectively planting them, and then not finding most of them. Um, so that was a neat thing that I learned, that most acorns hidden by squirrels are not found. Um, but in these studies, scientists are finding out that squirrels are actually pretty smart when it comes to acorns. So there are two types of acorns that these scientists studied, white acorns and red acorns. And those are from white oak trees and red oak trees. Um, and maybe I'll post a little um, a tree ID sheet in the comments too, because I don't have pictures of them right now, I'm sorry. Um, so there's one really neat difference about these acorns. White acorns, they sprout pretty much as soon as they land. So they definitely sprout in the fall. So once the tree produces all these acorns, the acorns drop and then they start germinating. They start to grow. And those acorns or the baby trees will overwinter as seedlings. Okay. And red acorns, they wait. They stay an acorn all winter and they germinate in the spring. So these squirrels, when they find these two acorns, they behave differently, which is really cool because I don't think of squirrels as being very smart, but it turns out they're smart about acorns. So when they find a white acorn, um, one the first study that they did found that they would eat those acorns immediately. And if they found a red acorn, they would store it. And that makes sense because those white acorns, they germinate. The squirrels only like them when they're acorns. They don't like eating them as much when they're baby plants. So the squirrels knew that the white acorns needed to be eaten sooner. And the red acorns, they would store all winter in the ground. Super cool. So then they watched another study, or they did another study on these same squirrels with the acorns. And they also watched the squirrels 
nibble on the ends of the acorns before they were storing them. And they only nibbled on the white acorns, the ones that sprout during the fall. And when they nibble on the ends, it, it kills the part that sprouts. So the acorns effectively won't grow anymore and now they can be stored. So the squirrels also knew how, or maybe they didn't know how, but they have a behavior for making it so that the acorns will last all winter. That's so cool. So now I wanna go out and find myself a red acorn and a white acorn and see what they look like and try to see if I can tell the difference between them. Um, and the scientists think the squirrels can tell the difference because of something called tannins. Everybody say tannins. I really like how it feels in my mouth when I say tannins. Um, and tannins are chemicals that the plants produce and they taste really bitter. And so the more tannins you have, the less likely animals are to want to eat them. But also um, they, it, it helps to helps to keep the plant safe and it it's sort of like, I mean, we can tell broccoli from lettuce, right? It helps us know a taste. So squirrels might be able to use the tannins to tell red acorns from white acorns, which is it just so cool. All right, so we talked a lot about squirrels eating. And you know what? I'm going to pause and look at the comments real quick. Um, so there are a lot of people talking about blonde squirrels. Um... And someone else said they saw a squirrel bark for about 10 minutes in the fall. Yeah, squirrels bark a lot. I think we're going to talk about that a little bit in their behaviors. Um, someone says they have a blonde squirrel. Um, someone else is talking about totally blonde and one that's just a little blonde. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, there are a lot of different color variations in squirrels. And I think it's pretty neat to look at them and see... Um, I don't know, see what the differences are, even within the same species. Someone else said that they have crows that eat the squirrel babies. And yes, we have that here too. Um, it's really, well, I think it's interesting to watch those sorts of interactions among animals. Um, I always feel sad for the thing getting eaten, but I always feel happy for the thing that's doing the eating. So it's uh, confusing. <laughs> But I do remember that crows are really smart and really cool, and I love crows. Maybe we'll have to do a video about crows later. Um, and I also know that crows have babies that they want to feed. So it is sad that the squirrels um, are not living, but I'm happy for the crows. And another thing, so we should talk about squirrel babies. So squirrels are able to have about two litters of, they're called kittens. Baby squirrels are kittens. Did you know that? <laughs> Makes me happy. Um, so they have litters twice a year and they usually have two or three babies at once. So they have young that are born in February and March. So really, really early spring. Um, pretty chilly here in Wisconsin still in February and March. And then there's another wave of babies that are July, August, and September. So if you see an adult with two or three smaller squirrels, those are likely the young from that year. Um, and squirrels hold territories that they'll have for most of their life. So when they're young, they'll disperse and try to find their own territory. Um, but once they have a territory, they usually stay there. Um, so the males usually disperse further than the females, which means the boys, they take off, they try to find their own territory females, the girls, might stick around a little longer. Um, and when they are trying to defend their territories, um, squirrels will be pretty forgiving if it's a relative. So if it's one of their babies sticking around, they might not chase them off too quickly or too aggressively. They also know who their neighbors are. So squirrels won't um, chase their neighbors too aggressively, usually. But if it's a new squirrel that they've never met before, then they're very aggressive towards that one. Um, and I think it's really interesting watching squirrels at my bird feeder because I know that the biggest one there is definitely the dominant one. The other ones don't try to climb the bird feeder when it's on there. And that one will chase the other ones away even if they're near the bird feeder. And it's very rare that 
that one will allow other squirrels onto the bird feeder. Sometimes it happens. Maybe when it's feeling very full or lazy or, I don't know, kind. <laughs> I don't know what the squirrel range of emotion is. But definitely when it's feeling full, for sure. Um, so it's really interesting to watch squirrel behaviors. Um, and some aggressive squirrel behaviors are um, flicking their tail a lot. They use their tail to help them communicate. And also um, stomping their feet or jumping at another squirrel. And uh, that barking noise that they make, too, that is an aggressive noise. And sometimes they'll even tussle a little bit. They'll roll around on the ground and fight, probably biting each other a bit. Um, but in general, squirrels try not to fight, and they try to uh, communicate using body language and sounds because no animal wants to get hurt. And if you're fighting, you could hurt each other, or you could be really distracted and not see the predator that's coming. Yeah. So we talked about, let's see, some aggressive behaviors and hierarchies. We talked a little bit about their home range. We talked about what they eat. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show you pictures. So in this field guide, the uh, Mammal Tracks and Sign Guide, it has a whole bunch of information on tracks and scat, of course. Um, so for example, this, this diagram on foot morphology actually shows the gray squirrel front and hind foot. This is the front and this is the hind foot. So you can see all of the little pads there and the toes. And they have one tiny little toe down here. And then they have two, three, four, five. So they do have five toes, even though it usually just shows as four on a footprint. And then on the back foot, all of their toes are visible in a footprint. So they have five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so it's got really cool information like this. Um, let's go find squirrel scat because who doesn't love squirrel scat? I like poop. <laughs> um, so this is gray squirrel scat. It's very small. Um, you can see the ruler up here and that is in inches. So they say the scat is only an eighth of an inch uh, long, in diameter and about a, uh, a fourth of an inch long. So they are pretty darn small, but they look like little, they're not balls, they're more like little tubes. And these squirrels will often just drop one or two little pellets while they're walking around. They don't make big mounds like other animals do. Um, let's see. So we looked at the poop. Someone on here says, could they be playing too, though? We've seen some smaller ones doing that in which they look like they're playing, probably rolling around and tumbling. Um, so it could be playing if they're small. I mean, all animals play to prepare for life. I think if they are adult squirrels and doing something like that, it's aggressive. Um, Although I don't know a lot about the mating behaviors of squirrels, so it's possible that they're doing something like that. But I think if adults are, are tussling, it's probably aggressive. Um, what I do want to show you, though, are these pictures of um, nuts opened by squirrels. So this page here has all kinds of nuts. These are hickory nuts, and they're all opened by different animals. So they've got a picture of one opened by a flying squirrel, and this one was carried by a flying squirrel. You can see the little tooth marks on it. And I am not a good enough tracker to be able to find something like this and identify it by myself. I'm still learning about tracking. I am a bird nerd. <laughs> but it's really cool to know that there are scientists out there or trackers that are able to find a nut and look at it and say, oh, look at these teeth marks. That was totally a flying squirrel. Or, oh, definitely a gray squirrel. That blows my mind. That's neat. Um, so I want to show um, both of these were opened by a gray squirrel. So these are hickory nuts that were opened by a gray squirrel. And it actually doesn't say how they tell that here. Um, so maybe I'll have to read the text and find out. But they look um, very chewed on for sure and all of the remains are eaten out. Um, and they also do look very different than the southern flying squirrel opening them. 
This animal chews just one little hole in it and extracts all of the meat of the nut, but the gray squirrel really breaks up the shell a lot before it removes all the meat, or while it's removing it, I'm not sure. And when I say meat, I mean the meat of the nut, not, you know, like a peanut would be like that, not like uh, meat from an animal, okay? Um, Sherry Taylor says, great book, Who Pooped in the Woods? Totally. Oh, we've got a great gif of a chipmunk trying to fit a peanut in its mouth. Love it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Um, and then let's see, the other thing I wanted to share in here about food is um, red pine cone or red squirrels, they really like to eat um, pine cones. And actually, I see pine cones like this in my backyard. And I know we have gray squirrels, but not red squirrels. So I'm pretty certain that gray squirrels eat pine cones like this too. But if you see a pine cone with all of the little um, scales stripped off of it, it might be a squirrel that has eaten all the little seeds out of it. Because remember, pine cones hold the seeds that the trees produce. Um, so that is another sign that a squirrel has been around. Oh, and we have more memes going. Excellent. Um, all right, so we talked about what squirrels eat. We talked, oh, let's talk more about squirrel tails. I want to do that. So squirrels have really, I mean, resplendent tails, right? They have large, large tails. And we already said that um, squirrels use their tails to help um, communicate. So when a squirrel is flicking their tail a lot, it could be aggressive towards another squirrel, or it could be um, the squirrel warning other squirrels about a predator. So if you ever see a squirrel doing a lot of tail flicking, look around and try to figure out what they're talking about, what they're upset about. Um, because it could be you, and <laughs> maybe you need to back up a little bit and give the squirrel space. Or it could be a cool animal um, that you're getting ready to see, or it could be a cool squirrel interaction that you're going to get to watch. So squirrels use their tails to talk to each other, but they also use it to help them... Um, they, they, they use their, their tails to help them thermoregulate, which means... Um, let's talk about that word, thermo and regulate. So regulate means to um, control it, to be able to, um, I don't know, well, control something, move it up or down. Um, and thermo is your temperature. So if you're thermoregulating, you're controlling your body temperature. So when a squirrel is feeling cold, it will wrap its tail all the way up close and tight to its body. And that helps it to maintain all the body heat it can. And birds do this, sort of, not with their tails, but when birds fluff their feathers up, it creates air pockets that are held by the feathers close to their body, and their body heat warms those air pockets, and so it's like they're carrying a little bubble of air around their bodies. Squirrels kind of do the same thing. So their tail is very, very fluffy, so the fur is already warm, kind of like feathers are warm, but a squirrel tail looks a little bit like a bottle brush. There's that small, small um, strip of bone and ligament and skin running through the middle, and then all of the fur sticks out the side. Very fluffy, right? So all of that fur sticking out helps trap air. Okay, we're still going. Sorry about that little pause. Um, their tails help trap air with all that fur. And so they are carrying around a little bubble of warmth in their tail. So when they curl it around their body, it helps keep them warm. If they're feeling too warm, they'll keep their tail away from their body. Um, lately, I've been seeing squirrels, if this was a tree branch, both their arms and their legs are just laying on either side of the tree branch and they're totally laid out on it and their tail is just all the way along the end of the tree branch and they look uh, just very hot and tired. <laughs> and, uh, they look like summer squirrels. Um, all right, so that is part of the way that squirrels can thermoregulate, but they also do something called countercurrent circulation with their tail. And a lot of birds do this with their feet, their long, long legs. So seagulls, that's part of the way they can stand on ice. And the word seagull is totally cool, too. If any birders are watching and they're rolling their eyes at me, seagull is a fine word to use. Um, so anyways, birds use countercurrent circulation in their legs to help them handle cold temperatures. And squirrels can do that in their tail. So 
what countercurrent circulation means. It's a little bit complicated, so let me explain. Pretend you've got um, two uh, either arteries or veins moving next to each other, so tubes that carry blood in your body. One of them is warm and one of them is cold. So when, say, this is the warm one and blood's moving through here, if it's close to a cold one, heat can move from the hot one to the cold one. And so both of them sort of become a little bit more um, to, to a middle temperature, right? So if it's cold out and the squirrel wants to keep heat in their body, they will let the warm or they will, they will stop. Sorry, my phone's being a little funny. Let's talk about if it's hot out. If it's hot out, the squirrel will let warm blood go into its tail so heat can leave the tail and leave the body. It helps them cool their body. If it's cold, they will use that countercurrent circulation to keep the blood inside of their body warm and the blood in their tail a little bit colder so they're not losing heat every time their blood goes out there. Countercurrent circulation is really complicated and really cool, and I thought it was neat that squirrels do that with their tail. Okay, so let's talk about squirrel homes a little bit, and then I think we're gonna be ready for eight minute notes. So if anyone has questions about squirrels, toss it in the comments right now, okay? Um, I wanna show a picture of a squirrel nest, and squirrels build two types of nests. So the first one is like this, it's called a dray. And a nest in a tree, a squirrel nest in a tree, is actually a few different layers. So when they start building it, they'll use sticks that still have leaves on it. So they harvest those sticks um, any time during the year, but often in the fall when there's still leaves on the tree. And then when those leaves die because the stick was cut, they stay attached to the leaves. So there's this layer of sticks and leaves on the outside. And then on the inside, they have, so it's inside this little, this ball, and it's about maybe the size of a basketball. Um, inside that, they make a nest full of really warm, cushy, soft things. Um, and so they've got this outer shell that keeps them warm and protected. And on the inside, it's very soft and warm. Um, and so in the winter, it's really easy to see these squirrel nests, these drays. Um, and they use them during the summer, usually, uh, because summer and spring and fall, of course, not all, all of the months except the really cold ones. Um, because those nests are really easy to build, and they can put them almost anywhere. So if there's a really good food source, they might just toss up a dray really quickly and use that while they're, um, while they're eating around that food source. Um, during the winter, though, squirrels usually use um, hollow trees for their nests. And during the summer, the warm months, squirrels are pretty solitary. So they stay alone or with their young of that year. Um, and they, they usually guard their tor territories against other squirrels, right? During the winter, though, they become a little bit more friendly because they want to stay warm. So scientists have found up to nine squirrels all cuddled up together in a winter home in their hollow tree. Um, and all of that body heat together helps the squirrels stay a lot warmer. And it gets really cold in Wisconsin. I know there are other places in the world where it's colder. But, um, I mean, we've seen negative 50 uh, before and... Those are those are some pretty cold times, especially if you're a squirrel outside. Um, all right, so I am going to check the comments. Um, someone says, do squirrels cry when they're hurt or in distress as babies or adults or both? Yes, squirrels vocalize a lot. So they will bark and chip at each other. Um, and they also squeal and yell and scream if... Uh, if they're getting eaten or attacked, for sure. So they will definitely vocalize if they're in pain. Most animals will. Um, and Sharon says, will they use the same nest over and over again? We have a huge, we have had a huge nest here for years, but have not seen any activity near it. Um, I know they will reuse nests that are built in trees. Ah, uh, they're all built in trees. I meant in a hollow of a tree. Um, because those nests are, they're pretty hard to come by, they're really sturdy, um, and the squirrels don't have to do a lot of work to use them. Um, so they'll definitely reuse those. 
Um, I'm not sure about the drays, the ones that are the stick nest, stick and leaf nest built in a tree. Um, and that's partly because um, all the leaves and the soft stuff inside, um, those have, they end up having a really high parasite load, which means that there's a lot of ticks and fleas and other bugs that might, um, I don't know, live off of the squirrels. Um, and so because they, those are easy to build and because they're also easily damaged, um, you know, if you look at those, those squirrel nests later in the winter, they, uh, they're in pretty rough shape. Um, those ones probably don't get reused as much. Um, so they might get reused for a season. Other animals might move into them. Um, but squirrels build a lot of drays up in trees. Oh, and, um... A good thing to note is that not many birds will build a big nest like this with a bunch of leaves in it. So if you find a large nest in a tree with a ton of leaves around the edge, um, it is, it's a squirrel nest. Um, and they're often, when they, when they first start out, they are very round and they might end up getting a little bit more compacted um, as they start to fall apart or as they age. Um, I think those are all the questions so far. Um, so that's basically the extent of my knowledge on squirrels. <laughs> um, so I will gladly answer any questions that you have now, um, but I'm gonna get started on eight minute notes. So if you want to join us for eight minute notes, grab your pen, grab your paper, and we're gonna get started, okay? And if you have any questions about squirrels or squirrel interactions with other animals, Write them in the comments, let me know. I would love to answer them. Hopefully I can answer them, right? <laughs> okay, so for eight minute notes, the first thing we wanna do, because we're good scientists, is write the date on our paper. And it is July 1st, 2020. So you can write July 1, 2020, or you can write 7-1-2020, okay? Um, so get your date on the paper. And if you want, you can put your name on the paper. It's a good thing to practice because eventually we're gonna have to go back to school someday, right? Um, and then the next thing I want you to do is draw a big plus sign on your paper. So you're gonna divide your paper into four sections, okay? And let's see, what should our four sections be today? The last one's gonna be draw for sure. Um, I think we'll write something someone said. I want to do something a wonder and a cool fact, okay? So I think the first thing we're going to do, the first one, is you're going to have two minutes to write down a cool fact. And if this is your first eight minute notes, because maybe you're just joining us with summer camp, um, for eight minute notes, you're going to have two minutes to write for each section. And you could draw if you're not into writing. Um, we're going to draw for the last one for sure, but you don't have to write. This isn't school. This is fun, right? Um, but if you do write, this is just for yourself. It's for you to remember um, the cool, sorry, it's for you to remember the cool things that we talked about, um, and it's to help you uh, grow as a scientist. So if you want to write in full sentences, go for it. If you don't want to, that's okay too. Don't worry about spelling unless that's something you're practicing. Just have fun. Okay, so you have two minutes to write a cool fact. All right, and let's, I'm going to get my watch out so we can start that. Ready, go. Two minutes. And you can come back to it if you run out of time. Okay, don't stress. All right, so I see a question in the comments that I'm gonna to get to, and it says, are squirrels and rabbits enemies? We've seen a squirrel attack a rabbit for no reason. Oh, well, I bet there was a reason. I bet we didn't, we just didn't know about it because we're humans. Um, so the squirrel might have been attacking the rabbit if it was near their food source or near their babies. Um, I, I don't think that they're enemies um, because squirrels and rabbits eat pretty different things in pretty different places, right? So for the most part, squirrels are up in trees or near trees. Rabbits are definitely on the ground um, and they could be near trees, but um, generally not, you know, they, it's, they each have what's called a different niche or niche, depending on how you wanna say it. Um, everybody, we have one minute left to write down a cool fact that you learned today. Um, and so I think that that squirrel might have 
um, maybe just chased off another squirrel from their territory or they were feeling um, like their, their young were nearby or something like that. It might have just been that they would chase any animal away there, not necessarily because it was a rabbit. That's a good, uh, a good question. Oh, and she says the rabbit was just sitting there in the middle of the lawn for a good 10 minutes before being attacked. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't see the whole interaction. I'm sorry. Um, I, like I said, they, they don't fight often. I bet there was some, some other factor that was at play there. Um, okay. So we are almost done with our first two minutes, and then I'm going to go answer the other questions that are coming in. So you have five seconds left. Are you ready? Get that last word in. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Okay, so we just finished the first of our eight minute note sections. The next one we're gonna do is write down something that we wonder because being a scientist is all about asking questions and trying to find the answers to it. And so wondering things is a really good way to start being a scientist. Okay, so you have two minutes to write down something you wonder. Ready, set, go. And there is so much that I wonder about squirrels. I wonder about the story Sherry was just telling us uh, with the squirrel that was attacking a rabbit. I wonder about dominance hierarchies and how squirrels establish who's boss. Um, it's probably the older and the bigger squirrels, but I'm still curious about it. Um, I wonder... Um, if I could do a study about squirrel acorns and try to find some that have had their ends nibbled off. Um, I wonder what it feels like to have a tail that big. <laughs> um, okay, so write down things that you wonder and you have about a minute and a half left. Um, so somebody else says, what happens when a squirrel encounters a trap? I have never seen a squirrel get caught in a trap. Um, well, I have a lot of questions <laughs> based on that. Um, I, so I have done some live trapping, um, just as a part of a mammal study and squirrels do get caught in traps for sure. Um, you need a big enough trap so you don't hurt their tail. Um, of course our goal was to trap them live and then release them. So, uh, depending on what your goal is, you might have a different type of trap. Um, but squirrels absolutely get caught in traps. They love food. They love peanut butter. Uh, and you can definitely trap them that way. Um, you should definitely look up any rules and regulations in your area before you start doing that though, because I know you need a permit for some of those things. Um, someone says, can squirrels be relocated and still survive? Um, well, remember what I said about squirrels being very kind to their neighbors, but, um, kicking out new squirrels. Um, so a squirrel can definitely be relocated and still survive. Um, I mean, they would have to find out where their new food sources are and where good spots are to hide because um, they'll be in a new area with uh, more predators or different predators. Um, but they might not have a very warm welcome from the squirrels that live there. And since squirrels are so common, anywhere you put a new squirrel, there's going to be other squirrels there already. Um, so if you relocate a squirrel, you might be setting it up for a pretty hard life, at least in the short term. Um, cool question. Okay, so we have about five seconds left in the wonder, uh, in the wonder uh, eight minute notes. All right, so everybody stop writing. Remember, you can come back to it. All right, so for our next session, or section, uh, pick another square on your sheet. Now we're going to write something that somebody said. So it could be something that I said while I was teaching. It could be something that another person in your in the room said while you were watching this. It could be something that you said if you're watching alone. Maybe you said, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> All right, so you're going to write down something that somebody said. Ready, set, go. Two minutes. And if you want to practice writing a quote correctly, Remember, you put quotation marks. Those are those two little lines, one at the beginning of what they said and one at the end of what they said. And you could ask maybe an older sibling or a grown-up, or you could even Google it if you need help writing quotation marks. Um, and then at the end, you usually say something like Carolyn said or Grandpa said, okay? And um, that helps, helps the reader figure out what someone said and who said it. 
Uh, all right, so if you have more questions, you can talk about that in the comments. Leave me a question. And we have just a few minutes left before this lesson is over. And if you have suggestions for a new lesson, I would love to hear it because it's looking like we'll be doing virtual teaching for quite a while. And I want to know what you want to learn about. All right, we have another minute left. Something someone said. What are you going to write down? If anyone wants to share what they're writing down too, I'd like to hear that. I'm going to hydrate because being hydrated is important. Mm. Okay, I will admit that I forget when we started this one. I think we have one minute left though. <laughs> I'm curious about what all the squirrels are saying to each other because we know when they sound angry or frustrated or when they're um, alerting people, or not people, alerting other squirrels to a predator. But I'm curious about um, whether squirrels have words for things. And I know they might not have words like humans have words, but scientists have done studies where um, animals will use different alarm calls for different predators. So, I mean, they might not be words like we use them, but they're definitely telling all of the creatures around them, especially their other members of their their group, you know, this is a hawk versus this is a snake. And so the animals will hide differently depending on whether it's in, um, whether it's a animal attacking from above or below. So I'm curious about whether our squirrels have different words for for different predators. Uh, cause that would be well, a really handy thing to have if you were a squirrel, cause they have a lot of predators. Okay. Now the time is officially up. Um, so we have one more section in our eight minute notes. And so for this last square, I would like you to draw something. So you can draw a squirrel, you can draw a squirrel nest, you can draw an acorn, you could draw an acorn with the ends nibbled off. Um, you could draw a squirrel tail, any of those things. And I think I will find a picture of a gray squirrel and I will hold it up so that you can see a gray squirrel in case you want to do that. So you have two minutes to draw. Ready? Go. Okay. Um, so Sue says, have you seen the YouTube where someone set up a picture frame with a peanut butter stick and the squirrel sticks its head into the frame and then they take a picture? Excellent. I, there are so many videos on YouTube of people um, doing silly things with squirrels. I really love the obstacle courses to get to bird feeders. Um, and I, I don't feel bad for the squirrels at all because squirrels do a lot of eating bird feeders. And in the end, they usually get food for their, um, for their efforts. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of really funny videos on YouTube about people messing with squirrels. Um... Let's see. So some people in the comments are talking about squirrels and maybe cats being able to survive a fall from any height. And I would be very surprised if that's true. I bet they are very good at surviving falls because squirrels spend a lot of time in trees. Um, but squirrels definitely get injured. Um, and so I first wonder what you mean by survive. So if they can just walk away from the fall, maybe, but if they were injured by the fall, they're probably going to have a harder time finding food and escaping predators. Um, so they still might die because of it. But also I bet they can't fall from any height. Uh, so I will, I will take a look at that and we can see, see what we, uh, see what we find. Um, so I'm not seeing too many more questions here. Someone says, I'm trying to keep squirrels out of my flower pots in the garden. That is a tricky thing. I have seen um, some people have luck sprinkling chili powder around, um, cayenne pepper, really hot stuff. Um, I have not had much luck with that because it's very, uh, when it rains, it gets washed away a bit. You got to keep reapplying. Um, so you might try something that moves like a pinwheel or um, you know, anything you would use to keep a woodpecker away from your house too. Um, but I think it might just be easier to enjoy the squirrels. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have better advice. Okay, kiddos, so if you are still drawing a squirrel, you can um, go and find a picture online or look outside your window and try to draw a squirrel that way because our two minutes are done. So that means our eight minute notes are done. So you can tuck that in your journal or put it in the pile of eight minute notes that you're saving. Um, if you wanna mail them to me, I would love to see them. I'll hang them on my refrigerator for you. Um, okay, so I have loved this lesson because squirrels are neat and they're cool and they're, um, they are actual wildlife that you can see pretty much anywhere. I mean, gosh, even in New York City, there are squirrels everywhere. Um, so remember that you don't have to go somewhere super far or super cool to see nature. It's really everywhere. Um, so thank you everyone for joining today. And all of our education programming is free and available to anyone with a Wi-Fi connection. I know there's a little bit of a limit there. But if you have the means and you really like our lessons, um, please support us uh, because every little bit helps. So I will drop a link in the comments about donating if you would like to. And if you're not able to, it's still going to be here for you. So please enjoy it. Share it with anyone you like. And go outside, spend some time in nature, and enjoy. Take care, everybody. Bye.